Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to be talking about a really, really, really cool project. Well, not project, a really cool um, bit of information and this is AOVIS. So this is a question that I've been getting from some of our more intermediate and advanced students because it's something that comes up, especially when you're working in the BFX film commercial industries. You don't uh, deal with this so much in games, but it is important to know what they are and how they're used. Now, I'm not the best one to show you the full pipeline on how they're using the compositing thing because that's, that's ah, that has more to do with the post-production side of things, but I am going to show you what they are, how you can get them, and how you can see them in other softwares. So uh, here we have the render of this lion. This is from our um, hard surface uh, mechanical course that was released a couple of months ago. You can check it out in the description as well. And um, this is just one of the beauty renders that we got from that course. Now, what are AOVs? AOVs stand for arbitrary output values. And you've probably seen them in like making of things and stuff like that. So AOVs are the passes that the software, in this case, Maya and Arnold utilize to build up our element. I always use the analogy of the cake, right? So if you're building a cake, you need milk, flour, eggs, a vanilla, stuff like that. Well, you mix all of those together and you get the final image. It works in a very similar way here in the 3D world. In order for us to get the to get the beauty render, which is the render that we normally see on the displays, in this case, uh, oh, not that one, this one right here, in order to get the beauty render, the, the render engine has to check what colors do we have, how the surfaces are reflecting light, do we have any emission, do we have any glass, do we have bounces of light going from the ground to the object, etc., etc. So all of that information is processed by the render engine, and of course, if we increase the samples and everything like that, we get a better result, but at the end, we get this thing called the beauty render, which is the combination of all of the different layers. Inside of Maya, the easiest way to get AOVs is by going here to the render settings, going to the AOV section, and under this side right here, you're gonna see all of the available AOVs that we can get out of the of the um, image. Now, depending on the production pipeline that you're in, you might need certain ones or you might not need some of the other ones. In this case, as you can see, I uh, copied the Z active AOV, Alvido, Diffuse Direct, Diffuse Indirect, Emission, Specular, and Transmission. You can like grab however many you want. You can grab all of them, but each pass that you add will make the image a little bit more um, heavy, right? So for instance, let's say I wanted to add like the, uh, we already have diffuse direct. Let's just grab this one, direct and indirect. Let's see what we get. So we just add this active AOBs right here. And now what's gonna happen is when we render our image, this thing will process, it will show us the exact same render that we're expecting to see anytime we render. But the difference is gonna come under this side right here. So as you can see now, under beauty, we have a lot of different things that we can analyze. For instance, albedo. The albedo pass is one of the most important pass, which as, as you can imagine right here, is gonna show us the color. No light influence, it's just the natural color that things have. So we can compare this to the map that we normally get in Substance Painter from our texturing process, and it should be like one-to-one. -one. Like this blue right here should be the exact blue that we selected on the color or the diffuse channel instead of our texturing engine. And the cool thing about this, the reason why AOVs are so important is as follows. If you prepare your render and your production pipeline so that you can utilize AOVs on the compositing side of things, then imagine we do a render and we spend days rendering an animation of this lion right here. And then we want to change the color of the panels because the client sees this and they're like, no, I don't like blue. I actually changed my mind and I want it to be orange. Well, it would be a really, really big pain in the you-know-where to change this thing into orange and re-render all of the sequences. However, if we set everything up with AOVs beforehand, we can go, and by using masks as well that we can generate with something called uh, Matte ID, we can just select those specific parts of the character and change their diffuse color on the diffuse pass and maybe on the specular, right? So that it matches everything else. So you can modify specific things from the element. I'm gonna show you a couple of other maps. For instance, a diffuse indirect, look at this. This is the bounces that we get from the indirect light. So all of the global illumination, in this case, the HDRI and the glow, for instance, of this thing, anything that's contributing to the light information from an indirect source will be in this map. And then we have, um, that's diffuse, sorry, that's diffuse direct. So that's the light coming in. Diffuse indirect is the bounce light. So as you guys know, by using ray tracing, we get light hitting the ground and then bouncing back up into the characters. So all of this illumination that we see right here, this is what's making up that specific pass right there. 
this direct one, as you can see, it's, it looks very similar to the to the beauty, but it's not the beauty because, as you can see, we are missing some information. So it's all of the direct illumination, which is not the same as just a diffuse direct because diffuse direct is only giving us the direct light that's hitting the diffuse channel. And direct is giving us also the specular channel. So it's combining both of them. And then we have things like emission. In this case, I don't think I have any emission. Indirect, again, indirect light or indirect illumination that's affecting the specular and the, um, what's the word, and the, and the diffuse. And then we got specular, which is only the the the, the shine, right? Well, that's not shine. It's not the shine. It's the reflective surface. So all of the colors that are being reflected, blue in this case from the panels, or all of the glass right here, all of the metal effect, even the, because even uh, a, a material that's not metallic, such as paint, will like reflect a little bit of information. Well, that reflection is being captured in this specular map right here. And finally, transmission, which in this case, we only have a little bit of transmission here on the glass. Now, there's one thing happening on this one. On the beauty render, we're actually using a denoiser that cleans up the image. It is possible to export the denoising pass. It actually, actually, ah, that's actually one of the things that you need to mark out right here, output a denoise AOVs. But we need to make sure that we're doing EXR right here, and we need to do a render sequence. We're not going to be getting the denoise passes here from our element. Now, let's say you already did this. You already created your beauty pass and you wanna like see all of those layers in other softwares. I'm gonna show you Photoshop. In order for you to be able to open this in Photoshop, you're gonna have to use a, this thing right here, which is called EXR.io. It's a free plugin that you need to download so that when you open a thing in Photoshop, as I'm about to show you, you get the options to open all of the layers properly. So I got my Lion AOVs EXR right here. I'm gonna just open it and there we go. This is what we got. So as you can see, we got the RG RGBA, we got the CRGB. By the way, I didn't show you what the C is. The C pass is actually a very important one. They use this one to fake uh, like a atmospheric fog and stuff like that on the on renders. Give me one second here for this to finish. Okay, let's stop. So if we go to the C pass, the C pass tells us where each part of the object is. However, we're not seeing anything here because we're actually using the full range of an EXR, which is 32 bits. I'm gonna go to pixel, and if you see me, like you can see the C pass right here, you can see how the values change. So right around here is where we have the lion, and you can see the values are like 270 to something. And as we go like down here to like a stone, look at that, 12,000, 12, like it's, it's really, really far away. You can visualize this a little bit more if we bring the exposure down to like a minus 10. And this is going to allow us to see which things are closer to the camera and which things are farther away. This is the kind of passes that are really helpful for compositors to make sure everything matches properly when doing like the post-production side of things. And again, you can actually use this pass right here to create like a fake fog on top of the character. It's a, it's a cheap way to do it because you get like a gradients going from like really black to really white all the way to the back. So now if we go to Photoshop, this is what we're going to see. And you can see all of my layers are right here. If I turn everything off, this should be my beauty render. Like this should perfectly match what we have here in Maya. But you're gonna notice something that's very, very common. One of the most common questions I get from my um, from my students, <laughs> which is why does my render look different? Why does the render look really nice here inside of Maya and it does not look nice here inside of Photoshop? And in Photoshop, that's because you exported this as an EXR, and when you do that, you you make this a linear image. So it's kind of like taking a raw photo from a like a traditional DSLR, and that it's not like properly color managed to get you the result that you had inside of Maya. Here inside of Maya, we're actually color managing. We can change this, by the way. If we do not apply the color manage, we might get a slightly different result. Uh, but what we only need to do is we just need to change the gamma of the element. So going here, if we go again to the first layer, which is the top layer, and we go to filter. And, or sorry, uh, image, mode, or adjustment, and we change this, uh, it's uh, exposure, we can just push the gamma correction down. And as you can see, we're gonna start getting closer to the uh, like the colors and the effects that we want. Some people like to play with exposure as well, but this is the, the, the beauty about the EXR. The EXR has so much information in the pixels that it allows us to like very precisely control exactly how we uh, want it. I personally have found that 0.7 is like a good number for uh, for the element right here. And you can change saturation, you can do a lot of things. That's why when we're doing renders, um, most of the times on my courses, I try to make the render like super, super perfect. But from a production standpoint, you don't really, if you're using this pipeline, you don't really care if the render is not perfect inside of Maya, because with all of the AOVs that we have, we're gonna be able to, um, to get a different result, okay? So I'm just gonna show you here real quick. Like if I turn on the albedo map, and I know that I need uh, the specular map, right? This one right here. We can actually position one on top of the other. And if we use something like a multiply, 
you can see how they add together and now we're seeing both of them, right? Like if this is this is the pure specular and if I add the specular and the albedo, we combine the elements and we generate a slightly different result. And that we can, for instance, add the diffuse direct as well. Let's uh, multiply this as well. It's usually multiply, sometimes it's linear dodge or divide, like it, it changes. Again, I'm not a post, like, post producer, I don't work in post production, so I don't know the exact weight on, on which uh, these layers are combined. But as a 3D artist, I sometimes get asked to export all of these AOBs for someone else to work on them. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Like with all of these elements again, like this diffuse indirect, if we do linear dodge, as you can see, this thing is adding a little bit of extra light. And the cool thing about these layers is like, if you have a client and they're like, hey, you know what? I really like the layer, but I would like the diffuse indirect to be a little bit more intense. No problem. We just modify the diffuse indirect and we add more light to the scene. And we're gonna like lighten up the whole thing. Of course, we can play with the contrast, we can play with things here, or look at this. Let's say right now we have this diffuse indirect, which is setting a nice light. What if we change the color? Image, adjustment, hue saturation, and we can change the color that's being bounced into the character. So now it's like a purple color or like a green color. This is the kind of stuff, again, that post producers use to make sure, for instance, that a shot matches perfectly when they're integrating light footage and 3D. You can try to get it really, really close inside of the Maya or Blender or any other software, but AOVs is where the real magic happens because this is where they can really tweak around and move every single thing. Think about, uh, like for instance here, the specular, right? Like the specular is all of the glossy things of the character. We can also go to the glossy things and be like, hey, we want this thing to be a little bit glossier. We just push the specular up. We want this thing to be a little bit less glossy. We push the specular down. It's gonna be like, we're gonna, well, in this case, it's, it's rougher and then it's shinier. In this case, I can add, for instance, a uh, exposure note at the very top of everything. And I can bring the gamma correction down so we can get closer to what we had, like 0.7, there we go. So yeah, that's it. So with the specular here, again, we can just go control L and start changing things around to modify how much or how little specular we're getting to our character. Again, there's better ways. There's actually better softwares. Um, back when I was at school, I used to do this with Nuke, uh, where you can get like the notes and it becomes a little bit more uh, procedural way to work. But this is a really, really, really strong uh, thing that you can have. So if you guys are interested, I would strongly recommend that you do a little bit more research about AOVs. Hopefully this introduction video of what they are and how we can get them is a good starting point for you guys. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about like 3D modeling and stuff, we have, uh, do we have the promo video here? Hey guys, Abraham here with huge news. No, that's not the promo video. That's the promo video from last month. But I'm just going to tell you guys, we have the Skillshare link down here. So all of our courses are available through Skillshare. There is a free 15-day trial, I believe, here in the in the comments so that you can check the modeling. I got a rendering course where we go over some of this stuff like lighting and proper composition. And uh, yeah, that's it. In the next couple of days, we're going to be having a release of a new course. So you're going to see me over here. And uh, let's continue building amazing stuff. If you want to support the channel, make sure to subscribe. Leave a like, share, comment, and uh, we also have a Discord channel, so make sure to, to join us down here in the description. That's it, guys. I'll see you back on the next one.